<laughs> Hello and welcome, heroes, to the Crit Academy. I am your host, Justin. I'm your co-host, Austin. And I'm your co-host, Ian. This podcast was created to provide you, our heroes, with new and reusable material for both players and DMs. We hope to inspire you with creative content that you can bring with you on your next adventure. Our show may not be suitable for young children, but neither is our D&D games. Nope. <laughs> no, sir. Yeah. Not really. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited for today's episode. We, uh, it's very rare that we do an episode that, while is usually purely focused on um, aspects of the players and their abilities, um, mm-hmm. today we're covering Big B's Handbook of Creative Spell Use. Which, to me, while there's a lot for the DM, this is definitely something I think every player should pick up. Because who doesn't want to just find ways to combine spells to just destroy everything? And if you don't necessarily use all the combinations in there, it'll get your ticker thinking. Oh, for sure. (laughs) Um, But before all that, um, if you enjoy the show and you'd like to help support us, you can head on over to CritAcademy.com. Uh, check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Crit Academy. Mm-hmm. Maybe pick up some of our best-selling supplements or just subscribe to our newsletter and be entered to win Fat Loots every single week. Yeah. Yeah. That's how we roll around here. We want to thank you guys for joining us here uh, today at Crit Academy where everything's made up and your roles don't matter. Yep, that's right. Your roles are like a spell that you can't use with another person. Something like that. Oh, yeah. It was blank. You know, <laughs> if you guys actually read this in advance, you would be able to point that yeah. out to me. But that was a good thing. Do you know the worst part was? I did, and I meant to put stuff in, but I was too tired to care. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't think what, of anything. It's like Bigby without his... Handbook of hand, Spells. Or Handbook of Spells. I like that <laughs> one, too. Because Bigby's hand is uh, one of the iconic spells in the book. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about blank segment today. I want to take a minute to talk about... Uh, We have a special release. I know on our show we always talk about how our game isn't suitable for children. Hmm. Um, Anybody that's been listening to any episodes of our show knows that I often talk about running games for the kids at church. Mm -hmm. Um, Which I find hilarious. It is, because especially with the Santanic Panic and some (laughs) older people being nuts at that stuff. (laughs) Um, I had a lot of... What a mess of just themes all together. I I saw my son summoning demons. Okay. Isn't that the bigger story? Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Like, how, what did it look like? Can Did you talk to it? I want to know. Like, <laughs> So with the um, encouragement of my grandpa, um, Bill, and my pastor, uh, Reverend Grant, Glenn Grant, um, they encouraged me to find a way to get this out there so that we could share this with other um, churches. I mean, that's part of, you know, our mission. So I... Go ahead. Uh, I, I went ahead and I, uh, I I took all the OGL rules and I compiled them and made an uh, adventure for currently the one that will be releasing on 10, uh, 9, 20, or October 9th. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's next yep. week. So as this, if you're listening, watching this live or before then, hey, maybe consider it's picking it up. It's literally in five days. Uh, it's uh, the Living Testament, the Three Magi. Basically, it drops our, our, our players, our disciples, right alongside the, the, the Three uh, Magi as they are seeking out um, the newborn king. And they get to interact with them, you know, p- disrupt all of Herod, Herod's easy evil, pla- <laughs> evil plans. Yeah. Um, which is fun. And then, you know, escort uh, and protect... Uh, Joseph and Mary, why they escape with baby Jesus. So I, I really had <laughs> nice. a, a... Very a, interesting yeah. concept in general as and to run with. I'm already getting questions about, well, what you, about magic? Um, let's, I'm going to be honest. It's very limited. Most of the classes that are in there, like the rogue, the barbarian, um, the Imagine don't the have, ranger yeah. type stuff. Um, I think I combined <laughs> the scout. I made, I made some combination things. But the big thing is, is we have disciples, which use are basically clerics. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I reflavored and rewrote some of the wizards for alchemy and stuff instead. So instead of kinda cool. making pointing in a fireball exploding, you're throwing a little canister and it explodes. Yeah. AKA a grenade. So um, and I recall it it's no longer magic, it's miracles. So I, I there was a lot of work that went into this. Yeah, I can imagine there was a lot of uh, <laughs> so, a lot of reflavoring and a lot of uh, rewriting. So. Yeah. But it was really fun, and I, I hope that uh, it does really well. Um, you look like you were going to say something, but you were kind and didn't cut me off, so I appreciate that. Yep. Basically, that made me think of one time where somebody years ago yeah. asked me, That's what this was. like, uh, how can you be a, how can you justify being a Christian playing d and I look back at them, because it's not real. It's fake. It's make-believe. <laughs> yeah. It's a game. It's... <laughs> 
<laughs> why are you overthinking this? <laughs> that's, a, that's a real big one, isn't it? It's right. like, huh, like, wait, you're serious. It's like yeah. that kind of thing. It's, it's like, fake. how do you, how do how do you get to this conclusion? How do yeah. my my conclusion's a lot easier to jump to than yours is? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like in all honesty. Yeah. And one of the things that's really hard as a as a educator of you know my faith, mm-hmm. um, it's hard to engage children. Yes. Um, so yes. To be able to you do to it in really... a way that they really had fun. I mean, they would come out of these, run into their mom, saying, "Oh my gosh, I had so much fun." And so yeah. So yeah, that is a. That in and of itself is also a challenge. I used to actually teach uh, kids for a little while, and that was – it came with a lot of its own uh, challenges, Mm -hmm. uh, especially when um, uh, some stuff went down uh, between uh, a lot of the working staff and the pastor, and Mm -hmm. it just – there was a lot of, like, disconnect, and that that just all went downhill really fast. But kudos to my friend who is still there. Uh, You're doing great, buddy. (laughs) I know you're not watching this, but I know that you'll probably hear me one day. <laughs> I think he's about to go break my toilet. Yep. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know. That's okay. Anyways, I'm really excited for it to come out. It'll be releasing on Drive Through RPG and Amazon. You can pick it up at our website. It will be in print. Um, cool. So I'm really excited. So hopefully um, you guys will uh, support this project if this is something you find interesting. Um, it's definitely a deviation from what I normally do. I was going to say. A uh, question about it, just because we may as well talk a little bit more about it since it is something that we are actively putting out. Mm-hmm. Um, what, because you, you kind of changed a little bit of the main things in there because you said there was a limitation on magic. Mm-hmm. What exactly did you change? I know it sounded like you you combined some of the subclasses, it sounded I, like. So I combined some of the features from the rogue in the uh, the ranger because to a scout. Because, A, I didn't feel like the need for an archetype that's all about killing and stealing was probably (laughs) a good thing to have in this. Um, So there was some of that. And it actually, surprisingly, it worked out really, really well. Honestly, it's it's almost a completely new class just Hmm. based off some of those features. Um, With the spell casting, I removed just certain classes. There's no sorcerer. There's no warlock. Mm -hmm. Now, it's 5th edition compatible, so if that's something you decide you want to bring to the table, that's okay. But for me, it was trying to keep it a little more... um, Just tame, I guess, is a good word. Um, Like, there's some... Like, there's not, like, elemental monsters or anything like that. The the monster manuals narrow down to things that have been talked about. Like, there's giants, because, you know, Goliath was a giant, right? So I've left things like that. And some of the more... Uh, interesting um, monsters, but a lot of it is a little bit more tame. Mm-hmm. Um, like when I was running it for the kids, when they were, you know, part of it is running a skill challenge to navigate through the desert following a star while they're getting attacked by bandits. So there's, you know, things like that. There's a variety of different, like, NPCs, um, monsters such as, like, you know, wolves and bears. All that stuff is kind of present. There's killer bees and, and insects. And I went kind of wild with some of the insects um, and stuff like that, um, like scarabs and stuff. But yeah. Uh, it definitely required it to be more tame, considering where it was being brought. For the audience, it's being yes. too, yeah. Now, because it's 5th edition compatible, you aren't limited to that, but that's what I felt needed to be. Because the idea was to bring this product that somebody can pick up and run this story Um and understand all the rules there's pre-generated characters in it there's no character creation rules or anything like that um because that would require a much bigger book and cost so it was trimmed down to be able to just give to the kids yeah now, if this is something people end up liking we will go back and we won't add enhancements to that but the right. goal is to to release like you know themed uh bible themed adventures like the the Easter uh, theme, mm-hmm. and this one's about Christmas time. So uh, it was a, it was a lot of work, and it was fun. Um, I enjoyed it, and the, the kids always had a blast. And having my pastor's um, kind of approval and encouragement really helped because I wouldn't have thought to try something like this. Right, and so. unless he like came up to you with it, yeah. yeah. So that makes sense. Did I actually even answer your question? No, you kind of did. Yeah, <laughs> you did. Uh, I kind of went on a ramble there. It, you got the general basis, and then you kind of went on to more of what I was going to ask anyway. So it kind of worked out. Yeah. Uh, but I guess that would be, or let's talk about Blank. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. But we also have gifts to give away because, you do. know, Loresmith. We always they're give awesome. away fat loots. Loresmith likes to hang out for us for a little bit here and there. <laughs> um, but right now they're giving away the modular dungeon tiles, the Arcania set. Now, the Arcania set, 
Uh, well, excuse me. The modular dungeon tiles are an easy way to create your own beautiful digital maps. Now, the Arcania set in specific lets you make these dark, shadowy dungeon maps rich with the fumes of arcane secrets. Uh, it's a little bit harder to tie it in with something Christian when it's a little more about uh, dark and doom. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, can't win them all. Yeah, <laughs> not, maybe this one's a little harder. Uh, yeah, that's but, okay. Uh, well, maybe you'll you'll find something closely related to something holy in like a hole in the wall somewhere and you'll be like, ah, oh, this is the light that will shine nice away safe. the darkness. There nice you go. Safe. I like that. There we, we tried something there. <laughs> Who's our winner today, Austin? Our, our winner today is White Gary. Okay. Woo! Yeah, White Gary! <laughs> Good on you, Gary. <laughs> Uh, congratulations. <laughs> if you didn't win, have no fear. You can head on over to CritAcademy.com slash Loresmith and get some free digital terrain, some one-shots, and some other fat loads. I kind of check out the fact that I walked in there at least, like, I'm really thrown off right now because you're still on screen due to the delay, and then you just walked right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, on to our main topic today. Big B's Handbook of Creative Spell Uses. It's very rare that you come across... A book that's so focused on optimization is that the right word or teamwork or teamwork yeah because both work them, some I, of I them both would work best with uh you know having uh multiple people that can do those effects so mm-hmm. especially since some of these combos require multiple concentration spells yes <laughs> that sounds brutal yeah and so what is this the handbook includes an annotation from one of the own one and only big b that he's big part of you know, D&D character lore and stuff by the great Rob Koontz, uh, a founding member of Greyhawk's Circle of Eight, if you're a big Greyhawk fan. Um, mm. It offers a host of amazing, super creative, and raw adhering spell and caster combos to help optimize and get the most out of your spell casting. Now, you may listen to the show. One of the things that I really struggle with every episode is player tips. Well, here's a whole damn book of them. <laughs> Yeah, Not literally just, just just pages of them. Uh, 70 pages to be exact. 50 creative techniques for spell uses and, and caster team-ups. And it's 100% rules as written. That's huge. Yes. Because there's no... There's really no way. argument. Yeah. yeah. You, you kind of just have to... You got. If your DM's like, well, I can't be right because it's not a supplement. Well, it, here's the thing. Um, they don't know who they're referring to. <laughs> um, so... So this this product was brought by some uh, pretty big uh, names in the in the uh, in the DMs Guild world. Phil Beckwith is uh, Beckwith has always done a, uh, some amazing work, and some of these people I'm just seeing for the first time. Others I've seen uh, throughout other publications, um, but I definitely think they went a very different way. First of all, the cover art's awesome. I love it. Like and it's a big him. hand in the way. Yeah. About and, it. And his hands behind it, his little spectral hands behind him too, which is pretty cool. Yeah. But it's in landscape. Now, I haven't seen landscape since some of the fourth edition um, Dungeons and Dragons magazines. The separate ones, not the Dungeons. Anyway, uh, since those magazines, because they were in landscape. And honestly, I really love landscape. And the fact that when I hold it on my phone, which you usually hold your like phone up, but you can turn yeah. it sideways and you can get up to three, four, five, five, how many columns? Is it three? Three. Three columns, yeah. I think. I think three, three columns the, of information, which actually is more than you would fit. I feel like it's more. It seems like it's more, um, but definitely <laughs> less page turning. Mm-hmm. But for this unique format, it actually worked really, really well, too. That actually mm-hmm. me back to some of my psychology classes back in college. <laughs> Oh, you think this is more, but it's actually the same size as this. <laughs> <laughs> right. It it's, looks like it. <laughs> like, I think it just helps. Uh, the reason I think it looks bigger, or it looks like it gives more space, is because it's uh, it's applying all the information pretty concisely on the page. Mm-hmm. Whereas it, Thanks so that. you see three columns, and you're like, oh, there has to be more here. When in reality, if it was just the same size page, it'd be like two just larger it's columns. It's like it's like when you buy a medium cup. In a large cup, and they're the same size of liquid. Same amount of liquid. My old psychology teacher, as I was saying before, gave an example of he used to be a bartender. And he would, of course, like uh, give people the drinks and they order something. But then somebody else would order a specific type of drink that comes with a, a special type of glass that's like, really tall. Mm-hmm. And the first guy would be like, I want that one. It's bigger. No, no. It's the same size. It's just it's tall and skinny. 
And there was, uh, I don't want to get <laughs> into it, but there lot. was some people that got in trouble for some running some <laughs> sketchy shit like that. So um, there's a lot of content, like I said, 50 of these these tips and tricks, basically. Now, there is a, a whole page dedicated that looks like it's handwritten by Big B, which I love. Whoever did this Very did a classy. Fan, fantastic job. The character persona is is great. So well done. That being said, is there any, uh, there's a couple of these that I really, really enjoyed. Um, so we're going to pick a few that we're going to talk about and uh, obviously we're not going to cover all of them. We'll probably each pick one or two and then we'll, mm-hmm. we'll go on. Uh, Ian, was there any particular one you thought was interesting that you think we should talk about? Uh, I read quite a few of these and they all kind of put it together after a while. <laughs> okay. Well, but um, one I thought was kind of neat was, this is one of the what? earlier ones. Actually, I actually think, actually it's the second one, the Artful Dodger. The Artful Dodger? I did the back. It was the first one. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So what about the art? What what is the artful dodger? I was actually looking at this one too. And I was like, this one actually seems kind of interesting because it act- actively uses a background. Yes. Yeah. Which is definitely that, awesome. That was part of it because you, you don't see too many strategies that revolve around backgrounds, which I not at all. Yeah. Think. Well, let's be real here. More games should probably lean into that. Just to mm-hmm. add that much more, not just flavor, yeah. but. You guys they do a... have features on them, and people yeah, tend yeah. to not realize that. You guys made a big stink about it when I did the encounter and it included that background. And now that I think about it, that doesn't get you done no, very it often. Doesn't. So that's a big deal. Like I lost how many times where I take like, like the folk hero background and show up in a town. I'm like, why does nobody know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I so, don't get it. so about the artful dodger. Um, maybe talk about the layout a little bit and how it's structured. Yep, as we were saying before, because it's in a landscape format, we have three different columns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It starts off as the, pre- the prereqs. The first one being, somebody in the party needs the urgent background. Then you need somebody who's a spellcaster, such as like a, a trigger domain cleric, druid, pal- paladin of the Avengers domain, or oath of glory. It's something that gets the spells needed. Right. Yeah. Is what it basically boils down to. Okay, so... And, uh... I keep going back and forth between my screen and that screen. It's yeah, no, you can, look at the, you can look at whichever one tickles your dice, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. But basically, the spells that they're going to need is Pass Without a Trace in haste on top of the urgent background. And it does mention the material components needed, but I think it's more for flavor than anything else for the spell components. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, but basically, the, as we know, the urgent background, they, generally speaking, know the layout of like cities better yeah. than anybody else. Therefore, they can get through places at double the speed as anybody okay. else can. <laughs> So you basically take somebody Most with the Most ur- times undetected as well. Yeah. Oof. And then basically to do that, you take the urchin, you cast Pass Without a Trace, and you cast Haste on them. That way they can blow through a city like that, deliver okay. messages, deliver packages, or help the party move through areas very quickly and without getting caught. Yeah, I was going to say, that's great when, uh, when you're being... Uh... Chase down when by When they're people. on town watch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Actually, it would fit very well into that one encounter that we... Yeah, oh, the yeah. encounter last week. I was just thinking that, yeah, it would fit right we, in. When you're trying to dodge the Should mafia guards, it. however, you want to lay it out. Right, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. And um, this would definitely... <laughs> this would do it. I mean, they, how, how do you challenge it, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, the, the, the sheer buff of pa- Pass Without a Trace is ridiculous, and then, you know... And, and it's insane. I think like the one drawback though that that this does mention is haste only lasts for about a minute. But let's mm-hmm. face it, if you're pretty you... far in a minute when somebody's yeah. chasing you, especially especially when they're hasted, especially if they're a rogue. Right, yeah. right. Um, it Second is... story work for a thief would be having a ball right now. <laughs> <laughs> be I, gone. I do think it's interesting that you mentioned the uh, one of the drawbacks because there is a section for each of these yeah. for cautions and limitations, which I think is genius because mm-hmm. I don't ever bother any advice I give. I never really consider the caution. Yeah, you're like, hey, like hey, hey, whatever. You'll figure it out. <laughs> don't die. <laughs> and what I also think is a nice touch too is in a lot of these sections, they also give you variations saying, okay, you may not have all all these spells, but here's mm-hmm. something that's a close second that could fill that similar gap. And one of those here is like, um, it doesn't even say, depending on your DM's ruling, on you also could use a uh, long strider instead. Hmm. Okay, okay, that's interesting. No, I that, like that. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I like stuff like that. So I like that they include the the, the variation or the variant uh, if for whatever reason you can't quite get it. But it applies, of course, to work right. Right? Yeah. 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 I like the name of that one, right? Which one? <laughs> Grease Lightning. Grease Lightning. Yeah. What on earth? And, Lon- and Longstrider, in a nutshell, because nobody ever uses this spell because I forgot it existed. Yeah. Is uh, basically for an hour you get you have plus ten feet to your movement, yeah. <laughs> which is good. That. Boom. 
And, be, and it lasts a whole hour instead of a minute. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> means less spell slots consumed. Right. So you just picked out one that I think is interesting. So do you want to tell us a little bit uh, Sure. A, about uh, Greased Lightning? Yeah, this one is a wonderful name. Greased Lightning is burning up the four old <laughs> Greased Lightning go. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the Prereqs. Uh, you need an Artificer, a Ranger, a Wizard with an available first or third slot, you know. Right. For required spells. <laughs> basically, the, yeah, basically yeah. for Zach. You need, you need spellcasters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, required spells, you need lightning, arrow, and, well, grease. <laughs> I do love that it gives you the reference of the yes. pages and everything. I, I just, it's a nice touch. I was just laughing at the fact that there's literally a spell called grease. I just didn't, I never knew that was a thing, yeah. to be honest. I really? flavored it once as barf. That makes sense. My wizard always got sick, so he just converted it into a weapon. He would throw up and just grease everywhere. Blech. I know. That's a little bit of a, a weird green <laughs> flavor, but I was playing a big, fat wizard guy. Hey, there you he go. He ate too much till he threw up. <laughs> uh, you need some material components, which mm-hmm. is just a bit of pork grind or butter. <laughs> <laughs> I love material components. <laughs> that gets so out there. No, that's interesting. Uh, so it allows the ranger to take a seemingly useless weapon, like a nut, and create a lightning charge damage dealing restraint from hell. <laughs> <laughs> the combination can be used regularly in combat and can even be built into a very unique and entertaining backstory. <laughs> Using a net to attack, this technique will transform the net into a bolt of lightning dealing 48 lightning damage on hit or half as much damage on a miss. Shit. In addition, each creature within 10 feet must succeed on the dexterity saving throw or take 2d8 additional lightning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. Get wrecked. Now, on a successful attack, the lightning bolt will transform back into a net, restraining the target. Restrained targets have a movement speed of zero, as well as disadvantage on all dexterity saving throws. Casting Grease allows you to take advantage of this condition, and if you are able to knock the target prone due to its movement speed, it will be unable to get up. The only way to free itself by either succeeding on a TC-10 strength check or by doing five slashing damage to the net. Oh my gosh. Finally, by using either the Unseen Servant spell or Mending Cantrip, Enemies can be continually targeted and potentially restrained by endless net attacks. Because you keep... Because you keep repairing the damn net. It or replacing it. Oh my gosh. So, uh... Savage. There are some instructions <laughs> here, which is... Cast Lightning Arrow. Make Step a one. net attack. And then cast Grease. You're done. <laughs> That's it. That, it's pretty straightforward. This has got some pretty great utility. I see you can prepare <laughs> an ambush. Um, that's it, awesome. This is kind of kind of silly. It, oh, it's kind of good. Some, there's some crazier things in here. The one I want to talk about is really interesting. This is kind of really good. I've, I've never... Like, who would think this? <laughs> who? One of the utilities has proved to the DM that the net is actually worthy weapon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, man. So this is, is interesting. Um, I never is. realized this. It says restrain creatures without slashing weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they they have to tear it out, which it I mean for big by, boss it, monsters, it they won't It says in about. here by doing slashing damage. So piercing and strength, no matter how high it is. Well, you have to. You can succeed on the DC ten strength check. Well, that's true, but still, um, if you're fighting something that's got a piercing weapon, I mean, they just go through the holes. <laughs> yeah, they kind of they can't they can't cut it. That's such a small, minute detail. That actively works. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, is there any other uh, utilities that are listed here? There's a few. Like uh, using, using the mount with a flying speed or the fly spell to clip an arrow on enemy's wings from above. <laughs> oh, dropping a net on them and shit. And they just fall to the ground. You just that airstrike awesome. a net on them yeah. that's made of lightning. <laughs> and one thing I I liked about the, su- the supplement too, and this... Oh, actually, go back. And Grease Lightning is a flavor. good example of this, yeah. is... Well, I was reading through this, like, use this spell, like, wait, that's a spell? <laughs> yes. You didn't know it. <laughs> Just because some of these spells that it uses aren't used that often. Right. And so I brought it up just now. I'm like, oh, you take a thrown weapon, and then you make the attack as normal, and the target takes an additional 4d8 lightning damage. Like, huh, that's pretty nice, it actually. It says lightning arrow. Yeah. But it isn't necessarily got to be an arrow. It's just your lightning javelin. You just become Thor temporarily. Or, or, or an axe. Lightning. Or an axe. Or an axe. See, that's awesome. That's a deceiving... Uh, it should be like lightning weapon or something. Yeah. I also like how it says Watson here, since that. there are no saving throws to avoid the damage from the lightning arrow or to avoid being restrained <laughs> oh, by the geez. net attack, this is a technique with a high success rate. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Because you can't dodge it. 
<laughs> well, you can. Dodge! It's just AC, not safe. Yeah. Right. Which makes it uh, an easier... Or the, yeah, that's awesome. It, it, it depends, honestly, because that, like, that would be on, like, I guess, enemy by enemy basis, right? Yeah. Right, right. Now, but you just turned your net into a javelin. Oh, geez, I like that guys. idea. That's so that's funny. Just, that's so savage. <laughs> it really is. Like, they really... They did a number. Now, there's one in here... And I'm trying to find uh, what it's called, and it has to do with throwing coins, I think. But I don't see where it's called here, and I didn't write it down. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. Well, I know I have thrown coins in the past by casting light on them first and throwing them down a dark tunnel. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. that's a pretty common one, I think. Yeah. Um, common use for that. You know, Relatively. I was, I was playing Celesta. You can only enchant objects like equipment. I was devastated by that. I found it. No. Money monsters. Money monsters. Now, what on earth? this, I, there's a lot of great ideas in here. And as a DM, do not be surprised if you guys run into this because holy crap. So the prerequisites uh, basically require you to have access to Crusader's Mantle and animate objects. Now, doesn't seem like a big deal. Oh, and 10 coins, right? We got to have coins. Yeah, you got to have so a little bit of money Crusader's on it. Crusader's Mantle, if I'm not mistaken, increases the party's damage output. Moderately, not a big deal on it in and of itself. Mm-hmm. However, potentially dealing an extra twenty d four plus forty damage to an enemy each round is just plain disgusting. Yeah, that's that's horrifying. Enjoy the carnage as the spellcaster throws ten coins into the air and animates them into tiny little terrors that feeds off the aura of the Crusader mantle, buffing it because they're animated creatures, right? Allies. What? Combining the ability to cre- create multiple attacking allies in a fight with Crusader's Mantle significantly increases the party's damage output. Use the coins. Uh, using coins creates additional benefits for the party as well, like flying attackers that can hover. Attackers with blindsight. Oh my god. The, the increased chances to hit your opponent just outright. Using uh, coins, which are tiny, versus you know other sized objects, grant several other advantage to your party. Uh, the object coins have higher AC, attack bonus, damage modifier. Um, this basically makes money monsters technique one of the most valuable combat techniques your party can ever have. All right, Crusader's mantle, thirty foot radius from you and all friendly creatures within uh, the aura, thirty feet radius, deals an extra one d four radiant damage. Yep. I see where the damage comes from now. <laughs> yes, because I think that adds up. I think on their own they do what one damage. It Probably. when you make that many with um a tiny one. Yeah, it's not much. I was gonna say you have to look anime up objects. anime object, but I think it's one damage for a tiny object. I just know maybe anime, it's one d four. I just know anime object comes with its own table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It comes with its own set so, of things. So basically, you yeah, you, tiny's uh, plus eight to hit, which is which is actually that's one huge. The, that's silly. Which is actually one of the highest. I'll always bring real here. And the damage is 1d4 plus 4. So. Yeah. Oh, plus, so, a, plus 4? Shit. Oh, my so God. get wrecked. Wow. They deal more damage than I thought. <laughs> well, damage. Well, well the uh, dexterity st- stat for those tiny ones are 18, so. Oh, Ooh. that makes sense. It's just a little coin. You yeah. just, you just so, took some pocket change. You're like, eh, get them, boys. Just pocket think sand. about <laughs> it. Like, the, the paladin releases this energizing aura, and then the wizard's just like, I got you, boy. Just flips a tw- 10 coins into the air, speaks an incantation. They float and start glowing like little golden super saiyans and just start darting around doo, 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 like little lasers, man. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> it's insane. Uh, it really offers a very clever way for the party to significantly maximize its output. Um, you can attack enemies. It really from- doesn't require that much. Right. And be- in all honesty. And they fly. Yeah, they fucking they're blind like a blind tiny, Yeah, they're a little tiny tornado of hell. <laughs> <laughs> they have blind sight. It's so crazy. Um, it says, would you have to treat the money monsters as a swarm from Oldie Handy? What is the ruling on the tiny objects? They're just ten individual creatures. So no, no, they're not a swarm. <laughs> you have to hit every single one. Yeah, you no, have I mean, to. Like AOE effects would capture most. How, well, you... how much? What is their armor? Or their their HP one. Uh, their HP is not very high, and of course you ask us after I close out of it. <clears throat> I imagine Whatever. it's pretty low, and I imagine well they have high dexterity. <laughs> so uh, you did mention uh, some of the the uh, 
the the limitations earlier that spells require concentration. Yeah. Both these do. So there is the risk that it gets disrupted if you're not mm-hmm. careful. All right, for um, the tiny ones, 20 HP, 18 AC. What level spell is that? It's relatively high. I was going to say, I think it's a fifth level. Fifth or third. Fifth level, yeah. So yeah, it's so kind of strong. Yeah, it is, it is a, a oh, high up there spell. <laughs> But, uh, but and, the, and the coins also got to remain in the air of the aura to get the benefit. Yeah, so. yeah. And the bigger creatures you make, too, the less of these you actually create. Like I think you yeah. only get like one huge one, for example. So right. But why would yeah, this you do is that when very... this works so much better? Yeah, this is. Kind of, well, the okay. Now, admittedly, this only works so well because of the Crusaders' mantle, right? Because yes. they're no. actively getting the one d. What is it? One d six. One d. One d four. One d four on top of the one d four plus four. Okay. So you're basically doubling their... their yeah. um... Do they have multi-attack? No. no. Dear oh. God, no. I was going to say, then how are they potentially dealing at 20d4 plus 40? Because, because, because there's 10 own, of them. <laughs> yeah, that's because there's 10. So on their own, oh, they're doing 1d4. Oh, wait, yeah, I, I get And okay. the aura gives them another d4. And then they have another... Okay, now that makes sense. Jesus, that's so much. <laughs> right? Go my wood chippers. <laughs> <laughs> they're just fucking... Could you imagine a big golden hell? plate pallet and walking with just a swarm of these golden coins floating around him? <gasps> what if the... What if he's just wearing it like <laughs> now here's something. Now his chain mail is made of these gold coins. Oh, and they just drop and they just off drop when they off cast and start the spell and just <laughs> oh my gosh. Just run that's, awesome. that's some dope ass flavor. <laughs> like nobody would expect that. Is your armor made out of coins? Yeah, what of it? Give me your sword, no weapons in the courtroom. Ha ha ha. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't I, yeah. I'm a monk. I am a weapon. Uh, <laughs> well then you have to wait outside. So there are there are a, a, a lot of these. I mean, yeah, there's, there's 50 a, there's of them. Ton. Um, one of the good ones was the minor illusions and its many uses. Sickening death sounds hilarious. They too. give, yeah, they, they give a lot of <laughs> options. Orbital bombardment. Yes, that was actually one I was originally going to talk about. Necromancer's before I found death the, uh, vice. Oh my lord! Yeah. Some of these sound awesome. Yeah, they do, and the the art really goes well with a lot of them. It does. Um, the 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 details like are one. just Speaking fantastic. Of the the work cool. is awesome. Um, well, we co- we covered three, right? Yeah, we covered three. three. Yeah, well, let's give an orbital bombardment because why not? Yeah, it sounds <laughs> sure. It sounds silly. It's right there. The one that's yeah, it's in alphabetical order, but I read slow. So, all right. Uh, so you want to tell us about orbital bombardment? Wow. Okay. So right off the bat, I just looked. Preparation time is ten minutes, so this is not during combat. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I'm but assuming me, because it's it. orbital. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see where this is going. <laughs> Required spells, scrying. And Meteor Swarm. <laughs> Make it rain, bitches. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to point out that Meteor Swarm is a uh, ninth level spell. <laughs> yeah, it is a ninth level spell. So, is it like... How, what, how do you... So, this oh, technique makes the most... Meteor the Swarm's most... range is one mile? And, right. And you, drop, a, and you drop three of them. From a point you yeah, can I, see. Yeah, but that's why... Oh, that's why you use that's Scry. That's <laughs> So, you're just like, oh, they're on the other side of the mountain. Ah, no biggie. Like, what do you mean? Would, no big... I, yeah, we, I scouted it out the other day, or I used my <gasps> dude. If it's a place you haven't been, you totally can use like find familiar to scout the area because you have to. Oh, you can to scry, You have to see. I think right. Yep. So if you haven't been there, you can easily use like a find familiar to to get a look by turning into like a spider and snooping mm-hmm. around. And you can cast spells that you're familiar too in some cases. So. That's a lot that's of spell shit. slots, but that person's getting fucked up. Yeah, they don't not, even. There's gonna be nothing <laughs> left. See, Bring here's the down, thing. Like, entire cities. Here's the thing. No one would ever know. No one would know you did it. They just think, oh my god, it's just a catastrophe came out of the sky and obliterated everything. Dude, this sounds like a, a campaign. Uh, like starter. a campaign starter. Yeah. yeah. The, no one knew what happened. No one was around. There's no mages even closely around that who has that kind of power to summon three <gasps> meteors out of the you sky. You guys go through this complex story arc to figure out who did it. And it turned out it was a guy did the, bombarded the wrong city. <laughs> it was an accident. He's like, oh, fuck. I, I'll never be able to show my face ever again. <laughs> oh, it's really good stuff. Yeah, um, that is. And this. Destroy this... an enemy within their lair. Wow. Yeah, that's the thing. That's another thing. You can literally just be. Like the boss would never know, never. That How no one can see like a mile out. That? Yeah, I mean, like it would be definitely a, a challenge. You would really need to do a lot of investigation. But yeah, like the the one thing, the hardest part about this is getting to to the point where your group stays long enough to have ninth level spells. Right, <laughs> that's the hardest part. Yeah, 
But holy um, shit. Yeah, like, yeah so you, you the, absolutely crush whatever's there. Yeah, this entire book is just <laughs> chock full of this stuff. I love the poor man's uh, wall of ice. Yeah, that picture's um, hilarious. It allows you to, to, to get access to a spell, way, or a, 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 a mimic a spell of very high power. Um, and there's a whole bunch of these. Like I said, there's oh, 50 yeah, there's of these. We're not so going to cover many. all yeah. of them. The other one I really liked was Ragdoll, which is pretty awesome. Basically just sm- tossing people around and shit. Um, I've never thought but, of orbital air striking somebody. You ju- you basically just call in an AC-130. You're just like, oh, yeah, AC-130 <laughs> inbound. <laughs> and, the, and, like, your paladin's looking over you like, what the hell are you talking about? And you're just like, oh, don't worry about it. And they hear like <laughs> g- like a catastrophe happen just like a mile over, and they're like, "Um, what just happened?" It's like, "Oh yeah, don't worry about it. That's my AC one thirty. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, it is worth noting that there is a section called Big B's Laboratory of Latent Wonders, which require a little bit of interpretation. And I like that they have these because they were things that didn't fit right within raw, but should be able to work. Um, mm. but Duric may require a little bit of DM fiat. Um, so I think that was really cool. Um, yeah, overall, cool. what do you guys think about it? There's a whole book of this stuff. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I uh, see, and the thing is, is every single one of these I would have never thought of. Like no. they, they are so out there, and they're actively using things you wouldn't normally use together mm-hmm. at all. And I guess it, uh, uh, quite a few of these spells, like wait, that exists. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I didn't know there was a grease spell. It's strictly that, just grease. That I knew, but I'll admit, a lot of that that just for me. Playing so many video games where that isn't available spell, so... Right. Like. All right. I think that'll do it for our main topic, Big B's Handbook of Creative Spell Use. Um, you can head on over to CritAcademy.com slash post slash episode 190. Yep. Uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead and also put the link in chat as of right now. And you guys can, uh, if it's something you're interested in, I consider I recommend picking it up because this is a book that will... Make your DM pull their hair out. Now, once you introduce your DM to this book, don't be surprised if you end up on the wrong end of an yeah. orbital roll strike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you just look around, you're like, hmm, you know, that looks, is that a, is that a scrying orb? What's going on? Is we... <laughs> hey guys, or, don't worry about it. <laughs> hey guys, why'd the sun go out? <laughs> Why did the sun go out? <laughs> it's dark. <laughs> All right. Uh, Oh, man, Before we move on to our other tips and tricks, we have another gift to give away. Ian, nice. would you like to tell everyone about that? Why, most certainly I can do that. This giveaway comes from Just Stevens Games with the Avenger Scourge of the Nightingale, Part 1, A Song of Love. A masked menace terrifies their region, raiding villages to fund her devious plan. Unknowingly, the Avengers stumble into her most recent evil scheme the kidnapping of a famous performer known as Devon Artis. Their mission is to deliver a ransom and collect Devon. Though, as in most cases, not all goes as planned. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Jeff Stevens' content is amazing. I'm really excited he'll be joining us next week. So um, Nice. Mm-hmm. This is a, a, a fantastic adventure. Um, so, R.F. Paustian. Sure. Yeah. Congratulations, you're this week's winner. If you enjoy the product, please take a few moments to let Jeff Stevens know. Head on over to his uh, um, the DMs Guild and leave him a review. The link will take you right to it that he sends you. So um, leaving reviews for content creators is single-handedly one of the best things you can do because it tips over people who are on the fence about whether they want to pick up a product or yep. not. Yep. So, pretty good. If you enjoy it, check out his other ones. It's a part, part three-part series. So. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't win, have no fear. You can head on over to CritAcademy.com slash Jeff Stevens. Get Villains and Layers 3 for free and Encounters on the Savage Seas 3 for free. Fat Loots. Oh, yeah. Jeff's all about them fat loots. Absolutely. <laughs> all righty. Uh, yeah, that'll do it for that. Moving on to our honor tips and tricks, we have an interesting character concept for you today. Uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> Ian, would you like to tell us about it? I can. The Accidental Pact, brought to you by our patron, Robots vs. Dinosaurs. (laughs) I mean, I'm in. (laughs) A dwarf miner who sings while working. And he unwittingly forms a pact with a demon residing deep underground while he sang the lyrics to an old folk tune, which also turns out to be a summoning ritual. (laughs) (laughs) Huh. 
His peck axe is now Im- imbued with unholy strength, and they have no idea why. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Awesome. Our patron supposes that this character will be a warlock slash bard, and whenever he sings, magical things just seem to happen around them. And he is always surprised or nonplussed because his only goal is to get back to work in the mine. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> He's like, I just look, guys, I'm just I'm just trying to get back home. I, I didn't really want to go to the giant's lair. <laughs> I'm just... <sighs> I want to go back to mine. I just want to take some rocks. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such an interesting story. Like, Although I gotta say, the architecture here is fantastic. <laughs> is, it, is the Hexblade the one that has the magical weapon? Yep. I yeah. think that would really fit this really well. Well, technically, whoever takes the uh, Pact of the Blade, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you, you just take but, Pact of the Blade. Yeah, but... If you're taking Hexblade, of course you're going to use Peck the Blade, because why wouldn't you? Right, right. If you didn't, you're doing yourself a disservice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happening. Um, I thought this was a great character concept. It, it just sounds fun. I, I, I'm, I instantly thought of my when I grew up watching the Disney flicks with the, the Seven Dwarves and their little whistling song. I would be whistling that if I was running this character every it's session. A pretty funny character. I, yeah. I like the idea. You move to 16 tons. What do you get? <laughs> I don't remember that in Disney. A lot of doom. (laughs) Another day older and deeper in debt. Okay. (laughs) So that'll do it for our character concept. The Accidental Pact. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Roberts Roberts. versus Dinosaurs. (laughs) Hey, Robert. Thank you for being a patron. I think that's Lewis, actually. Yeah. Um, Cool. Our monster variant today is the Grungar. Many dangerous creatures stalk the world. Many inspire fear among the populace, few do so like the Grungar. When it roars, many know that death is to follow. And someone, and all who hear it, hope that is not them. That was good. Who wrote that? Me. That was really good. Was a, it's probably Me. him. That was really good. I was like, I don't remember writing that, but that sounds awesome, so I probably didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> so, the origin monster we're going to start with here is the Werebear. Uh, you're going to lose the shape changer, the hybrid form, the great axe, and the multi attack. Yeah. Well, then what does it get? It gets two new features it gets legendary actions and it gets roar. roar. Now, I think I could only find this find this feature being used once in the monster manual. Really? Um, but I didn't check throughout Tomb of, Tomb of uh, Foes or Xana, uh, or uh, Volos. Yeah, Volos. Um, but I only found yeah. it used on one. So I was really excited to use this uh, on another monster so roar it can be used three times a day the creature emits a magical roar each time it roars before finishing a long rest the roar is louder and uh, and the effect is different that's cool each creature within 500 feet of the creature and able that is within 500 feet of the creature and is able to hear the roar must make a saving throw the first that's like 1,000 feet foot radius that's, that's huge. huge yeah that's that's massive um, that's Fireball all. is 20, and you know how that big that is? That blows up an entire house. This is like... Your whole village. Yeah, this is like your whole village. Fifth of a mile, man. That's yeah, huge. that's... Uh... So, this is a what? A... No, I guess that's too short. I was going to say a kilometer. I'm like, no, no. No. Um, so, the first roar... You're at least killing the whole cul-de-sac with this. Yeah. <laughs> Each creature that fails a DC 14 wisdom saving throw is frightened for one minute. Oh, that's not so bad. And frightened creature can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of its turns, ending the effect on itself on its side. Oh, that's yeah, not bad. No, that's just a regular, you know, frightened effect. I mean, okay. frightened's okay. still annoying. But... I mean, frightened sucks. Yeah, but... Was like, Second you know. roar, each creature that fails a DC 14 saving throw is now deafened and frightened for one minute. Ah, that's and a little And frightened little creature is paralyzed. Ah, and each, they can repeat this uh, on each of its turns, ending the effect on a success. The third roar: each creature makes a DC 14 Constitution saving throw, and on a failed save, a creature takes 1848 thunder damage and is knocked prone. On ah. a successful save, the creature takes half as much damage and isn't knocked prone. So pretty much, this thing has three different AOE moves that just ramps up every time it does it. Yes. Yep. Hell yeah! Yeah, it's like I'm. I'm, I'm for some about reason. It. Who is it? Entei, that 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 Pokemon that's got the big, and it looks like a giant like lion tiger thing. Uh, yeah. I envision that every time I, I when yeah. I was reading this. Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Um. So that's pretty cool, right? But those are mm-hmm. actions. So guess what? That means it takes at least three rounds. That wasn't fast enough for me. <laughs> 
no. <laughs> so I gave it some legendary actions. Uh, the the Grungar can take oh. two legendary actions chosen from the list below. That's funny. Roar and attack, which takes two actions. And the Grungar makes one attack with its biter claw. Oh, wow. So you can just make this go through all three of its roars just like instantly if they somehow all keep succeeding and it realizes this yes on the next person's turn it's going to do it again <laughs> yeah but it it is worth noting that it can only use it three times a day so once it uses them all yeah um, but, it has to finish for long but rest. the goal was to compound the the um the difficulty yeah um as quickly as possible now that sucks for the players That'll teach you to ignore your constitution. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's yeah. no way. Like, that, okay, I just want to state real quick. This has three uh, different saving throws. Mm-hmm. Are they all different? They're all different. I'm pretty right. sure. Well, two oh, no, more wisdom. Two wisdom. wisdom. Uh, I thought, but still, that targets two different. Uh, yeah, and not saves. everyone has. I don't, actually, I don't know if anyone has one or the other. I guess paladins. Yeah, paladin has con- wisdom and. In... Charisma. Never mind. Charisma. Well, yeah, so not even constitution. Sarah's so like, can the uh, bard get an ability like that? <laughs> um, you know what? Send me an email as a reminder, and next time I build a uh, build a new bard, maybe I'll include a dope-ass feature like that. It'd be like a rock band uh, bard where he's just screaming. Okay. <laughs> or one really loud bass note. Yeah. <laughs> Trumble and everything around it. Like an FLCL. Yeah. There was a, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We're, uh, there's also in uh, in Digimon, the one guy plays the, the big guitar and it just trembles everything around mm-hmm. it. <gasps> that would be a dope-ass bard. Send, send me an email for that because that's awesome and I think I can do something with that. And my axe. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the axe guitar thing. Yeah. Um, it's always ooh, a good idea. That's, that's now a uh, magical item that bards can use. There that's you go. Awesome. There you go. There's yeah. your idea. Why You're welcome. Else would a bard ever use an axe until now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a barbarian who used an axe. Uh, well, no, never mind. He used a maul. A little bit different. A little bit. I could, could Accomplishes say. almost the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that'll do it for our monster variant, the Grungar. That's pretty good. Austin, or you want, you want to take the I think counter? I'm, I think I'm the next one. Right? Yeah, you are. Go ahead. Yeah, why not? Do it. This is, submit- this is a good one. I like this. Okay. The encounter of the podcast is the imprisoned spirit submitted by Charles Kuntz. Thank you, Charles. Patron. Yeah. I didn't write that in there. I'm a schmuck. <laughs> He's a patron. I'm sorry. Uh, the character struggled to get through an ancient passage trap, door, or other obstacle. Due to the nature of the challenge, they must seek out help to traversing the lost pathway. This forces the characters to seek out the aid of one who was around when the pathway was created. Rumor has it that there was an ancient spirit bound in an iron wood tree by an iron rod. <laughs> the spell only allows the spirit free at dusk, vanishing at the first rays of light. Da-da-da. Rumor has it. Ooh. Yeah, that popped Rumor in my head has too. It. <laughs> <laughs> I saw it and I couldn't help myself. Uh, the spirit is Temon Aneristos. Sure. Close lawful, enough. He's lawful neutral. He's male and he's a banshee. <laughs> Uh, a ghostly translucent human with a long face, tangled silver hair, and large white eyes. He wears plain clothing, and a clan medallion hangs around his chest. He knows the secrets of the pathway, but will only part with them if the characters will aid him in attaining his freedom by removing the rod that seals him. Now, there's probably a reason for that, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, he is found near the crossroads, near an old iron cage used to retain thieves and bandits. The rod has been placed into the iron wood by something with immense strength and requires a successful DC 23 oh, strength dexterity. Or de- strength athletics, <laughs> not dexterity. You can't use both. <laughs> <laughs> Check to pull free. It's uh, worth pointing out that a uh, character with 20 strength would need a 19 or 20 to succeed on this. Yeah. And that's not. And that's assuming you don't have proficiency with athletics. Although let's be real here, most yeah, strength based characters do. probably do. Yeah. Uh, the characters are likely to approach this one of three ways. If the characters attempt to intimidate Timon in any way, succeed or not, he chooses to attack the party for the rude behavior. <laughs> you just get. <laughs> okay, dick. <laughs> He's like, all right, fine. I guess I'll haunt you like everyone else who comes in here. Uh, should the party be neutral or indifferent in their support, he freely gives them the information they seek and le- then leaves to seek revenge on those who wronged him. Oh, shit. <laughs> He's just pissed. <laughs> <laughs> if the characters choose to be friendly and take interest in his story, leaning, learning of his forced binding to the tree by his foul family and ruining his afterlife... Then he shares a secret alternative to deal with the obstacle, one that leads to additional treasure along the way. It's good to be a good guy. You have me at money. <laughs> right. Um, 
first of all, I want to thank Charles for submitting this. I did have to rewrite it so it fit our, our new format, but mm-hmm. um, I did like this idea. I like it for a couple different reasons. First of all, um, this is investigative based you have to yep. actively go in okay we found this this blockage now we have to get around it but we can't do it without some help we need to go find some help mm-hmm. um, this can apply in so many different scenarios that it makes it easily droppable into any story or campaign right which is fantastic um i love that he included uh short details such as the reason he was bound mm-hmm. was because of his family trying to uh, ruin his afterlife for whatever reason. That gives the DM a lot of uh, fiat to twist and t- turn why that is. Yeah, either he was a dick, they were dicks, or they were all dicks. <laughs> there's way, usually there's no way around dicks. it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't be a dick. I also really like the insane strength check that they have to do because I'm I'm I'm, I'm assuming this is like magically bound, and mm. someone's just trying to like just raw man this thing, and they're like, hey uh, guys. Magic sucks. <laughs> and that's interesting because that's the other thing that I think is left open to the DM. If it's magically bound, could... I, could I they assume just if somebody, it? Yeah, that's what I was yeah. like. If somebody just dis- used dispel magic, boom, pull it right out. Or maybe they need a special item and he shares that, hey, I need you to go find this to weaken this spell. It's like a corkscrew for a, st- for a steel rod, like one for you. It's like a wine bottle. It's like, oh, you just got to twist this thing in here and pull. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's... It, doesn't have as much um, detail as I think um, would really make this complete, but I do like that it's open enough that as the DM, you can kind of just can, take some creative freedom yeah. with it. But yeah, he, he does give us um, just enough to put with, you on track. Yeah, and the results of how the the players interact, which I think is really great. Mm-hmm. I do um, like how there's, I guess, multiple endings. Yeah. I guess even though like in D and D technically there's going to be in like a near infinite amount of endings to whatever you do because i guarantee you even if you run a module the players are going to find some other way to fuck it all up and they're not going to find out (laughs) (laughs) um great job uh charles thank you so much for this good one i really enjoyed this that will do it the our encounter of the imprisoned spirit now technically i think you should go next technically would you like to do our magic item our magical item today is the debate club. <laughs> ah, I see. That it is a weapon, which is a club, which is uncommon. This thick wooden club is cracked, battered, and altogether not much to look at. But it has a uh, most pervasive line of reasoning, if you will. <laughs> yeah. So what is this? You gain a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls made to this magic weapon so far as standard, which is alright. Cool. But when you fail a charisma persuasion check while holding this weapon, you use an action to attempt to frighten somebody with the debate club's menacing presence within 30 feet of you. Ah. If the creature can see or hear you, it must succeed on a DC 13 wisdom saving throw or be frightened of you until the end of your next turn. Oh yeah, well I want oh yeah, we'll have a club. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> I'm the one with the big stick here. On a subsequent turn, you can use your next action to extend the duration of this effect on a frightened creature until the end of your next turn. It's a good one. This effect ends if the creature ends its turn out of your line of sight or more than 60 feet away from you. I just want to imagine someone's running after him. <laughs> if the creature succeeds on a saving throw, uh. you can't use this feature against the creature again for 24 hours. Now you can use it a number of time equal to your charisma modifier, minimum of once. And when you finish a long rest, you regain all your expended uses. When I read this, the first thing that came to mind was, in, I, mean, I never actually read this, but I read, read the example from like the Discworld book series, where the, the characters were trying to get into a noble's house and the guy up front, do you have an appointment? No, but we have an axe. <laughs> <laughs> that gets us an appointment. <laughs> so like, I, I imagine he just looks down as Clip no, already looks back at you and he's like... <sighs> Scribbles down the name. All right, you're in. Get, Just get in there. No, 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 no. An axe is an implement used to, to inflict harm on people. An appointment is a preset amount of time for somebody so you can meet them. So, no, tell your boss we don't have an appointment, but we have an axe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there's a really there's a really great game that just came out and is blowing up the PS4, the PC, and mobile called Genshin Impact. And yes, that, that is a, it's exploded and yeah, out of proportion. I think it's hard. In the first, like, 24 hours, I had over 10 million... Players. Probably. It doesn't surprise um, me. Very much uh, 
feels kind of like Breath of the Wild to begin with. Yes, there's, lots there's of... a lot of very similar mechanics. Yeah. Yep. So, but anyways, one of the first magic items I got was a debate club, and I could not help. I was like, I'm I gotta do something there. with this. I've got to give. I've got to do something with this. So I always, you always see the the movies where somebody's trying to persuade somebody to do something, and then they just do hit their baseball bat on their mm-hmm. palm and get what they want. That's kind of what I, the direction I took with this. Right. Um, and more importantly, it's a club, which I don't see a whole lot of them because optimally they're not da- <laughs> not that kind of club. <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> um, I am who I am. <laughs> to me, it was uh, just a great. Um, uh, um, thematic weapon that just kind of made sense what's really cool is it goes off of failing uh arguments which yeah you, know, you, you lose the argument and then you're like oh well luckily i have this stick and which hopefully can change the situation to your Probably favor maybe for the worst but you right. know i say it was gonna make the situation better to just change the situation i like to buy an argument <laughs> <laughs> no uh, you, just, it, you just hit them. It is worth noting that this does require attunement, so you can't just pass the damn thing around till you <laughs> get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's your turn to use a debate club. Yeah, we're part of the debate club club. What? Oh. No, he's just part of the yeah. debate club. <laughs> well, Handy, not that kind of club. Well, not with that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that'll do it for our magic item, the debate club. <laughs> Pretty good. Oh, don't, you want me to do it? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Sure. I forgot that he just read the other so one. So the Dungeon Master tip today is player creek. What? <laughs> that sounds good. Go with that. <laughs> player character rumors Rumor Rumor by Pink it. Dice GM on Twitter. Yay, Twitter. <laughs> Love me some tweets. In recent games, I require players to write five rumors related to their character's reputation. Too good, too bad, one false. I later pass these out to other players as things their PCs would have overheard. It spawns great role play. I can actually see a lot I of love use for this. that. And it's something stolen. simple. I know. And this really could be a lot of fun. And if they decide to have fun with this, will they write down as the one that's not false? <laughs> oh, because you can make up anything. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, this is so. Like, could you imagine writing some uh, bullshit line like, you're afraid of this one thing? And the rogue figures it out, or the bard. Somebody who likes to play tricks regularly, and they're constantly like, putting these things that show up. And like, why do they? It's so weird. Every time I w- wake up, there's a dead spider in my shoe. It's... I don't yeah. know what's happening. He's uh, like, does that scare you? Huh? Does it? Does it? Like, Are you scared? Get... No. Waiting for it... a reaction. <laughs> or how players can react to each other. Dude, I heard this interesting r- rumor about you. Look, man, there's only one sheep. What? Wait, what? What? <laughs> what? 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 What were you talking about? Uh, what were you talking about? Not that, but I'm not curious. <laughs> <laughs> I like that feeding just, off each other. He's like, "How did you?" Huh, what? No, no. Uh, it was apparently about a cupcake sheep. <laughs> Becca, there's a different story <laughs> we're we're trying to learn here now. <laughs> <laughs> right, you gotta try to unreal the truth. It's like I, the whole like <laughs> woman is like, "I just saw my son summoning demons." Right now, what about the demon? <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, I think this is cool because, A, you can have a lot of fun with the rumors. Oh, for sure. But it also builds potential um, um, character development because if I write something down that's true that says, you know, I murdered my brother. Whoops. And they hear that as a rumor. Are they going to – how is that going to proceed? Because did I murder my brother because he was doing something (laughs) bad? Did I murder my brother because he killed the entire clan? Oh. I'm looking at you, Uchiha. Old Handy. Is that what you think? It's when I was trying to learn Fireball. <laughs> That'll get you out of it. It was an accident. It just happened. You know how investigating magic spells is? You, you, you just do this it. tonic, and this thing happens. Next thing you know, you're... You're flying through the air, and I'm riding a dragon. <laughs> or a sheep. <laughs> or a sheep. I think he was talking about... About blowing up a sheep, but oh, yeah. gotcha. <laughs> but still, so, it applies. Don't so many things. I think this is a, a, a great DM tip, and I will probably be incorporating it in our next uh, run because I think this is it's uh, pretty good. Yeah, fantastic. I like it a lot. It takes little or to zero prep. As the DM, I would recommend keeping track of all this, like write them down somewhere where you can reference them later, um, and especially maybe keep track of how it um, the players react and what kind of stems from it. Mm-hmm. Um, just write down like just put them on like index cards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could just be really. Really good, yeah. Yep. yep. That'll do it for our dungeon master tip: player character rumors. I like that. 
Our player tip of the podcast is... Don't, don't be a, a dick. dick! And you can avoid dickitude by... Take their focus. Now, many casters need some sort of magical arcane focus to channel their power through. Yep. Wizards oh have arcane focus. Some druids have druidic going. focus. W- clerics have their holy symbol. A great way to weaken an enemy caster is attempt to, a- attempt to snatch their arcane focus. Now, you can take it right from their hands. Now, there's not really normal mechanics for this, but there is one in particular that it can do this directly without any say from your DM. Mm-hmm. The battle master fighter excels at this. They have their disarming attack that allows you to force them to drop one item that they're holding. Now, obviously, what is the most common thing you would think? Rogue. No, like weapon or shield. Like, a, I like a wand or something? Yep. Yeah, like knock something out of their hands. You think weapons, generally. That's what I did. I like guess a sword that. or like a shield. Yeah. yeah, you can just get rid of it. Or like that whole bird that guy is wielding and you realize it's probably magical. Knock it out of his hand, take it. <laughs> yeah, kick it so it slides over to your little rogue buddy who can yep. pick it up. Yep. Or just have like a rogue pick their pocket before your battle starts. Well, you'd have to be well, know you'd... that they are those sorts of casters and have those implements first. Now, yeah. that would also require... It's still an option. You also <laughs> requires your players to, uh, you know... Be prepared. Yep. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Depends on the group. But yes. Yeah, yeah it's true. But anyways, this is uh, something true, pretty true. interesting. So yeah, you can argue that you do sleight of hands and pickpocket them or anything. But having an actual mechanic directly in combat to basically strip a wizard, a druid, a, a cleric of some of their power. Now, it's not going to stop all of them, right? Because they mm-hmm. can still do... No. Don't you, no, requi- don't you, you require those? You because require it, an kind of need for everything. <laughs> So you can totally shut down a caster with this ability. Yeah, I remember that gun mage or uh, your uh, your players or or your, your what? If you bought the gun mage and your DM's getting real pissy, you might want to hide your arcane focus a little more <laughs> because the DM's gonna be like, "I'm gonna disarm strike this motherfucker." Yeah. Well, and it's worth noting that you don't necessarily have to be a battle master fighter. You can pick up the feat. Yeah, there's the, mar- the, the marshal. The what is marshal adept. Yeah, that's the one. I think that's the one. And you could pick yeah. this up. No, uh, that's pretty good. Of which wow. class yeah, that's pick, which that's, is a good yeah. good use of that. I would say, um, either disarming to get rid of weapons, or more importantly, stop a caster dead in their tracks. Yeah, because uh, I don't. What would they do? They're gonna punch me. They're, they're gonna fucking run away. I would <laughs> imagine. <laughs> There's like, hey, uh, I need that. Okay, I did look this up actually, and it's the uh, answers the question of do you need a spellcasting focus to cast spells? Well, yes, but actually no. But it comes down to what spell are you using? <laughs> okay, how so? Uh... Because like, uh, like some spells only require require like a verbal component, for example. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, yeah, so I guess you wouldn't need an arcane focus just to speak some okay. words. So and some wouldn't... spells do list a arcane focus as part of its re- required materials, so. Okay. Interesting. So, how many actually is that, then? I don't I'm know. not a clue. I'm just doing some quick Well, Google yeah, because they would say anything that says uh, re- has any material components, actually. Yeah. Because the arcane focus is supplement for um, material components. You can do either or. It's flavor, basically. So basically, mm. anything that requires a, uh, a material component that's not got a money cost to it. Yeah, I would. I envision so. Interesting. Anyways, I think it's fantastic and clever, and that was something that I don't know why I hadn't uh, stumbled across before, uh, or even thought of, because apparently I only think of this stuff when I'm actively looking for ways to break the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's half the fun. Uh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> So okay. yeah, that was a good player tip. Yeah, All like right. like the scrying, for example, does require like a focus worth at least one thousand gold pieces, for example. So uh, that's rough. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for our player tip of the podcast. Don't, Don't be, be a, a dick. dick, and you can avoid dickitude by stealing, taking their focus away, little bastards. This requires some more research on my part because I'm not really curious about that. <laughs> yeah, it was yep. quite a bit. Uh, All right, that'll do it for our show today. Um. Please join us on our next episode. As I mentioned earlier, Jeff Stevens is going to be joining us. We're going to be talking about his upcoming Kickstarter that launches October 6th called the Pot Belly Cobalt. Um, so I'm super excited by that. If you haven't already and you want to get a sneak peek of what's in, head on over to CritAcademy.com and go to our blog section and look for – I already forgot the name of that, uh, what I named. And I did this last week too. I'm sorry, people. <laughs> It is called, if it'll load, 
Maybe. There it is. Right. Da, 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 da. Oh. Did I pass it? Probably. Ah, Slime there. Cave oh, of Norwal. <laughs> um, huh. Yeah. Slime Cave of Norwal. I'll go ahead and put the post in the, the link in the post. You can check it out. It's written by James Intercaso. Uh, big, big name in the, the D&D world. Yeah. So. Okay, that's right. The Arcane Focus basically functions as a substitute for for uh, spell materials mm-hmm. worth under a gold piece. So yes. anything that does not have a material component, go nuts! <laughs> yeah, and I don't know how... I know the wizard, a lot of them require that, but I know yeah. there are some that don't. Cantrip's probably not so much, but... Yeah. Probably. Uh, I don't know. Find a popular cantrip like Firebolt. Uh, all right. Uh, like Altered Blast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just uh, verbal and somatic. Okay. Oh, there you go. So you're not going to gimp them entirely. That's a shame. But they're well, gonna, I thought I was they are going to be... <laughs> but you still can screw them over. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they will definitely be having okay. some trouble. They shoot a little fireball. Yeah. Psst. Oh, man. If that's all you got, your boat. <laughs> okay. okay. Those all are cantrips, but they probably won't have their leveled spells. So. Yeah. Right. Most of them, anyway. Right. Yeah. If you have any feedback on Earth Tips and Tricks or topics you'd like us to discuss, please send them to us. Uh, you can email them to us at critacademy at gmail.com or find us on Twitter and Facebook and, obviously, Twitch. And YouTube at Crit Academy. Mm-hmm. All right. We hope you enjoyed your experience here at Crit Academy. If you did, you can help others find the show by leaving a, hopefully, five-star review on iTunes or your please, platform of choice. Please do that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Or just send us a message telling us how much you enjoyed the show. And also, be sure to give us a like and a share. I had no idea that the more reviews you have, the higher it pushes you up in the ranking. So, yep. yeah. do that, please. Thank you. Um yeah, make sure to subscribe to our show at crickhemi.com. Follow us on Twitch and on YouTube. Specifically, follow us on YouTube, man. We need those more f- subscribers. Hit that subscribe button. Get our loot. I know uh, Ian's been putting out great uh, short, you know, five-minute videos from our con- snippets mm-hmm. from our videos. So mm-hmm. definitely uh, check that out. Um, or you can also uh, sign up at our website to so we can uh, help you on your future adventures as mm-hmm. well as be entered to win cool prizes each and every single week. You can also visit our fellowship members there as well. If you're not checked out Lore Smith's content, I've talked about Lore Smith extensively. His content's amazing. One of my favorite content, their third-party content creators. Um, he does amazing work, and and him and his team are just awesome. Also, check out Gabe and Jeff's Interparty Conflict. Uh, single-handedly, one of my favorite uh, discussion D and D podcasts. Um, and I make sure to catch every episode. Those guys are doing awesome work, and you really should support them. Follow them on their social media and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, they need your yeah. support. Go over there. Wow. It's a short episode. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that happens. Mm-hmm. I'm your host, Justin. I'm your co-host, Austin. And I'm your co-host, Dan. Thanks for listening. Keep your blades sharp and spells prepared, heroes. Blah, blah, blah.